in freestyle skiing history. At this is an NBC News special report. Here's Lester Holt. Good afternoon. We're coming on the air with breaking news. Just moments from now, President Biden will update the nation on his administration's efforts to keep Russian President Vladimir Putin from ordering an invasion of Ukraine. President Biden has just concluded a call with NATO allies regarding the crisis. All this comes amid an increasing buildup of Russia's military troops on Ukraine's borders and new accusations today of cyber attacks. Uh, the president, we should be seeing him momentarily in the Roosevelt Room as we wait for him to prepare. Uh, let me go to Kristen Welker right now at the White House. Kristen, do we have uh, more guidance as to what we'll hear from the president? Well, Lester, this is the second time that President Biden will speak to the American people about the situation in Ukraine this week, and it underscores that this is an intensifying crisis. I am told that he is going to emphasize there is still a path to diplomacy and the efforts at deterrence that are underway. Now, remember just yesterday, he said that an invasion by Russia into Ukraine could come in a matter of days. So he sees this as an opportunity to update the American people as we head into what will undoubtedly be a critical weekend. Now, it comes on the heels of that conversation that you mentioned, Lester, with transatlantic leaders. It lasted about 48 minutes. It also comes as top officials here confirmed this afternoon that the administration has now assessed that Russia is behind those cyber attacks against the defense ministry and key banks in Ukraine. That is significant because the administration has long said those are the types of actions that could pre seed any invasion. The shelling that we are seeing in Ukraine, another type of action that the U.S. has warned about. So those efforts at diplomacy have been going on behind the scenes, Lester. Yeah, the uh, a defense official saying a destabilization campaign has begun. 40 to 50 percent of uh, Russian forces along the border are in attack position. Uh, according to a defense official, as we again wait the president to emerge there in the Roosevelt Room uh, to bring us up to date with the very latest. Let me go to uh, Richard Engel right now. He's inside Ukraine. Uh, Richard, uh, this disinformation campaign, are you, are you seeing it where you are? What's the, what's the temperature on the ground? Well, the temperature is getting a, a lot higher, and we are absolutely in the middle of what feels like an elaborate disinformation campaign. Um, the, there is a, a part of this country controlled by Russian-backed separatists. Uh, it has been controlled by Russian-backed separatists for the last eight years. And for the last 24 hours, those separatists have been claiming that they are under attack by the Ukrainian military, that they are in a position where they need to evacuate. In fact, the separatist leaders today put out a call for all of the pro-Russian community living in that area. There's about two million people living in an area adjacent to, uh, adjacent to Russia to get in their cars, uh, starting with men, women, uh, with women, children, and the elderly first, and to get out of the country. And there are reports in Russia that Vladimir Putin is promising to pay each family forced to leave, forced to escape because of an impending Ukrainian invasion, the equivalent of $130. All right, Richard, here's the president. Today, I made two vital calls, as I've been making for some months now. Two vital calls that uh, on the situation in Russia and Ukraine. The first was to a bipartisan group of members of Congress who are currently representing the United States, along with Vice President Harris at the Munich uh, Security Conference. The second was the latest in a series of calls over the past many months with the heads of state of our NATO allies and our, the European Union, to bring them up to date on what the United States thinks is the current state of affairs and what's likely to happen in Ukraine in the coming days to ensure that we continue to remain in lockstep, that is, the European Union and NATO. Despite Russia's efforts to divide us at home and abroad, I can affirm that has not happened. The overwhelming message of both, on both calls was one of unity, determination, and resolve. I shared with all of those on the calls what we know about a rapidly escalating crisis in Ukraine. Over the last few days, we've seen reports of a major uptick in violations of the ceasefire, 
by Russian-backed fighters attempting to provoke Ukraine in the Donbas. For example, a shelling of a Ukrainian kindergarten yesterday, which Russia has falsely asserted was carried out by Ukraine. And we also uh, continue to see more and more disinformation being pushed out by to the Russian public, including Russian-backed separatists, claiming that Ukraine is planning to launch a massive offensive attack in the Donbas. Well, look, there is simply no evidence of these assertions, and it defies, defies basic logic to believe the Ukrainians would choose this moment with well over 150,000 troops arrayed on its borders to escalate a year-long conflict. Russia's state media also continues to make phony allegations of a genocide taking place in the Donbas and push fabricated claims warning about Ukraine's attack on Russia without any evidence. That's just what I'm sure Ukraine's thinking of doing, attacking Russia. All of these are consistent with the playbook the Russians have used before to set up a false justification to act against Ukraine. This is also in line with the pretext scenarios that the United States and our allies and partners have been warning about for weeks. Throughout these tense moments, the Ukrainian forces have shown great judgment and, I might add, restraint. They refuse to allow the Russians to bait them into war. But the fact remains, Russian troops currently have Ukraine surrounded from Belarus along the Russian border and with Ukraine to the Black Sea in the south and all of its border. You know, look, we have reason to believe the Russian forces are planning to uh, and intend to attack Ukraine in the coming week, in the coming days. We believe that they will target Ukraine's capital, Kyiv, a city of 2.8 million innocent people. We're calling out Russia's plans loudly and repeatedly, not because we want a conflict, but because we're doing everything in our power to remove any reason that Russia may give to justify invading Ukraine and prevent them from moving. Make no mistake, if Russia pursues its plans, it will be responsible for a ca catastrophic and needless war of choice. The United States and our allies are prepared to defend every inch of NATO territory from any threat to our collective security as well. We also will not send troops in to fight in Ukraine, but we will continue to support the Ukrainian people. This past year, the United States provided a record amount of security assistance to Ukraine to bolster its defensive, $650 million from Javelin missiles to ammunition. We also previously provided $500 million in Ukraine and humanitarian aid and economic support for Ukraine. And earlier this week, we also announced an additional sovereign loan guarantee of up to $1 billion to strengthen Ukraine's economic resilience. But the bottom line is this. The United States and our allies and partners will support the Ukrainian people. We will hold Russia accountable for its actions. The West is united and resolved. We're ready to impose severe sanctions on Russia if it further invades Ukraine. But I say again, Russia can still choose diplomacy. It is not too late to de-escalate and return to the negotiating table. Last night, Russia agreed that Secretary of State Blinken and Foreign Minister Lavrov should meet on, Fe uh, on February 24th, February 24th in Europe. But if Russia takes military action before that date, we'll be clear that they have slammed the door shut on diplomacy. They will, have they will have chosen a war, and they will pay a steep price for doing so, not only from the sanctions that we and our allies will impose on Russia, but the more outrage the rest of the world will visit upon them. You know, there are many issues that divide our nation and our world, but standing up to Russian aggression is not one of them. The American people are united. Europe is united. The transatlantic community is united. Our political parties in this country are united. The entire free world is united. Russia has a choice between war and all the suffering it will bring or diplomacy that will make a future safer for everyone. Now, I'm happy to take a few questions. Uh, Nancy from Bloomberg. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Do you think that it is wise for President Zelensky to leave Ukraine if an invasion is as imminent as the U.S. says it is? That's a judgment for him to make and a determination as to whether or not I've spoken with Zelensky a dozen times, maybe more, I don't know. 
and uh, and uh, it's uh, in, in, in the pursuit of a, di a diplomatic solution. Uh, it may not be fall. It may, may be the wise choice, but it's his decision. And do you have any indication about whether President Putin has made a decision on whether to invade? Do you feel confident that he that he hasn't made that decision already? As of this moment, I'm convinced he's made the decision. We have reason to believe that. There seems to be a unanimity of spirit to do between the United States and Europe to do some sanctions, the comprehensive sanctions. But are, is everyone on board with the exact same sanctions that you want to do? Uh, yes. Um, there will be some slight differences, but none. There will be more add-ons than subtractions. And, and President Putin is going to oversee some nuclear drills this weekend. How do you see that happening? What, what's your reaction to that, sir? Thank you. Well, um, I don't think he is remotely contemplating nuclear, using nuclear weapons. But I do think it's, uh, I think he is um, focused on trying to convince the world that he has uh, the ability to change the dynamics uh, in Europe in a way that he cannot. Um, but I, I don't, uh, how much of it is a, uh, a cover for just saying we're just doing exercises and, and there's more than that. I, I just can't, I, it's hard to read his mind. Mr. 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 President, to be clear, to be clear, you, to be clear, you are convinced that you are convinced that President Putin is going to invade Ukraine. Is that what you just said a few moments yes, ago? Yes, I did. Yes. So, is diplomacy off the table then? No. There's all until he does. Diplomacy is always a possibility. What reason do you have to believe he's considering that option at all? We have a significant intelligence capability. Thank you very Thank much. You guys. Thank you. Thank you. President Biden with brief remarks and taking a few questions, as you can see there, saying he's convinced that Russia, Vladimir Putin, has made the decision to invade. The president continued to talk about coming days and, and, and the coming week as for the timing. Uh, the president also noting that the Russians are following what he refers to as a playbook of disinformation, false flag type operations, destabilization efforts within uh, uh, the media in Russia as a pretext to invasion. We want to go to NBC News. News Chief White House Correspondent Kristen Welker. And Kristen, notably, the president said there is a planned meeting between Secretary Blinken and his... Live, local.